Let me introduce you to Emma. She's been making content for so long, but her socials aren't growing at all. Her motivation is at an all-time low, and I don't want her to say goodbye to her dream. So let's teach her everything about subtitles, because there's so much more to it than you might think. So let's open up Premiere. Drag your video into the timeline. Now Emma thinks she needs to type all of her subtitles in herself, which I understand nobody wants to do that. No Emma, don't quit. You can let Premiere generate the subtitles. Let me show you how. Premiere recently updated the text panel, which we're gonna use to turn your speech into text. Or in other words, transcribe it. Go to the window menu on top and find text. In the text window, click the transcript tab. Here you will find a list of all the clips that are in your project. Now just click the transcribe button and let it do its thing. This can take a while, but you can actually let Premiere do it automatically every time you import your clips. To enable this feature, go to the edit menu on top and go all the way down to preferences. Then choose transcriptions. Here you can enable the automatic transcription. You can also decide whether you want this to be applied on only the clips in the sequence or on all the clips that are imported in your project. You can set the default talking language to whatever language you speak. Then click OK. So the video is done transcribing. Awesome. Now if you decide to cut something out of your clip, the text will also be removed in the text panel. And it's the same thing the other way around. If you remove something from the text panel, it will also be removed from the timeline. It's text editing. That's amazing. But what if the transcriber in Premiere made a mistake and the text is incorrect? Then you can double click the text and adjust it. It's that simple. Now it's time to create the captions. To do that, open up the menu on the top right and click the CC button. This will open up the caption preferences. Here you can select a style that you saved before, but we'll get to that in a minute. Here you can choose the maximum length in characters the sub will show on screen. I like this to be between 10 and 20. Here you can set the duration of the caption clips and with the last slider you can choose how many frames there will be placed in between the captions. You can also choose between single and double lights. I prefer it to be single. That way you can use more space to show the text. Click create captions and there you go. Your subtitles are generated. Now they do look like little subtitles you see on TV which is not what we want. We need to style the text. Ah it seems like your audience needs a new video quickly. Your subs are are declining rapidly, Emma. So please don't waste your time styling your captions one by one. First, head over to the window menu and open up Essential Graphics. Then in the timeline, select all the captions like this and now everything you do in the Essential Graphics panel will be applied to all the selected clips. First, I like to change the font to something that stands out more. Once you've found it, it's time to scale and position your text. You can enable all caps because that's much easier to read. Next, choose a color for your subtitles, perhaps even a gradient, whatever you prefer. Try to find something that has enough contrast with your background, otherwise the text will be hard to read. You can always add a stroke to your text as well, this will make it pop more. So we've done all the work styling the captions, but it seems like we can't animate them. No Emma, please don't delete your channel, there's still hope. I got something for you. Select the clips and head over to the graphics and titles menu. Once it's open, choose upgrade caption to graphic layer. Now you can basically do whatever you want because these are just normal graphic layers. Oh, and by the way, you can still edit the style of them by selecting them all and going into the essential graphics panel. You can also save the style you created, call it pink for example, and use it in future videos. Remember the caption preferences, that's where you can insert them. It's easy. The next very important thing in your videos is music. You really need it to set a mood and tone for your audience. It plays a huge huge role in whether the viewer likes your content or not. That's why you need to check out Audio, where you can download all kinds of music and sound effects. Oh, and they're also sponsoring this video, by the way. Thank you. You can find anything on there, literally everything you can imagine. When I'm editing these Premiere Basics episodes, I always use audio to find music because these filters, they're really easy to use. They are constantly adding new music, so you always have new and fresh music to choose from. You don't even have to worry about copyright or monetization issues, they will take care of that. Audio has always provided us with the best and most trendworthy music for creators like us, no matter how big or small you are. Because of that vision, they launched Audio Originals. It's a collaboration with top industry music producers that can continuously make music specifically for us creators. You won't find that anywhere else. With Audio Pro, you can get access to Audio Originals and more than 30,000 songs and sound effects. Click the link below to check out Audio and by using the code Premiere Basics, you can get all that for just $59 for an entire year. How awesome is that? Now, back to Premiere. All right, the first subtitle is gonna get a bounce animation. In the effects library, find the transform effect and drag it on the graphics layer. First, you need to set your anchor point. To do that, go to the effect controls and adjust the anchor point position until the text is located in the middle of the screen. Then use the position property to align the anchor point with the position point. Now, when you scale it up or down, it will do that from the middle of the text. Grab the play it and move to the first frame of the clip. Set the scale to zero and click the stopwatch icon to set a keyframe. Move 
further in time and set the scale a little over 100. Then move forward again and set it back to 100. Right click the first keyframe and choose ease out. Now right click the second one and choose ease in. Also ease in the last keyframe. Now increase the shutter angle to introduce motion blur and that will give you a bouncy scale animation. For the next one we're gonna use some 3D effects. Now first you need to center the text and to do that select the graphics layer and go to the essential graphics panel. Then click the horizontal and vertical center button. There you go. Now find the basic 3D effect and drag it on your clip. Head over to the effect controls and make sure the playhead is at the first frame of the clip. Then find the tilt property and set it to minus 90. Click the stopwatch icon to set a keyframe and now the text should be gone. Move further in time and set it to something around 50. This is what gonna makes it bouncy. Move further again and set it to minus 20. Then move forward another time and set it to zero. Now with movement comes motion blur. To create it find the directional blur effect in the effects library. Drag it on top of your graphics layer and head over to the effect controls. Set the player to the first frame of the clip and find the blur length property. Then set a keyframe and increase the blur length to something around 25. Move the player a little further in time and then go back to blur length property and set it to zero. Again ease the keyframes and that's it. Now we need to reposition it. And to do that right click the graphics layer and choose nest. Give it a name and click OK. Now head over to the effect controls and move the position of the text back to the bottom. We're doing this on a nested sequence because now the basic 3D effect will move together with the text. That looks awesome. All right, I'm sure you're gonna love the third effect. It's gonna be a warp animation. First find the transform effect and drag it on the clip. Head over to the effect controls and find the anchor point property. Just like we did before, move the anchor point up and then move the position down to match them. Again, this is so that the scaling starts from the middle of the text. Go to the scale property and scale the text all the way up to 200. Make sure the playhead is at the first frame of the clip and set a scale keyframe. Then grab the playhead and move further in time. Set the scale back to 100. And now we have a zoom out animation. Now since we're making everything bouncy today, we're gonna do the same for this one. Move the playhead back in time and set the scale to something around 80. And again, make sure to ease the last two keyframes. Also make sure to increase the shutter angle to enable motion blur. This animation looks nice, but to make it even more nice, nicer. Find the turbulent displace effect in the effect library and drag it underneath the transform effect. That's really important otherwise it won't work. Set the playhead to the first frame of the clip and go to the amount property. Set it to 500 and then click the stopwatch icon. Now set the size to 10 and also set a keyframe. Set the evolution to 15 and again set a keyframe. Now move further in time and set the amount to 0. Then set the size to 2. Now go to the evolution and set it to 0 degrees. That looks awesome. Now Emma can upload her video and look at that. Your social are already blowing up. I'm really proud of you. So you're almost ready to crush it on social media, but if you're using transitions incorrectly, your retention will crash instantly. Now, good thing you learn everything about how to prevent that in the next lesson by clicking the video on my left. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay creative.